What is cryptocurrency? To understand this, we have with us Bappa Sinha, who explains what is a digital token as currency as opposed to a state-backed currency. We will also talk about different kinds of cryptocurrencies that are there. We should um, ideally start talking about uh, what cryptocurrencies are not. So um, when we talk about regular currency, whether it be US dollar, the Indian rupees, uh, the euro, these are all currencies which are backed by um, by states, by, by um, sovereign states, right? And the central bank of a country, or let's say in case of Euro, the, the European Central Bank is responsible for creating um, the, the money, uh, the, the currency, and for maintaining the uh, money supply within, um, within its domain. Um, cryptocurrencies are not backed by any state. Uh, they are by definition decentralized. So uh, it is the the crypto network, right? So in, let's say the, the popular cryptocurrencies are things like Bitcoin, Ethereum. So uh, the Bitcoin network is responsible for creating um, the Bitcoins and is also responsible for validating when Bitcoins get transferred between two parties. Now, this the, the sanctity of the Bitcoin itself is uh, uh, maintained through cryptography and that's why they're called cryptocurrencies. Now, um, uh, there is this process called uh, mining. So, so you have heard about Bitcoin miners and uh, stuff like that. So the miners are people with effectively very powerful computers who run these complex algorithms. And the job of the algorithms is to, uh, uh, one, create, uh, uh, well, one, validate a transaction between two parties and also to create new, uh, new Bitcoins. And, and the same is true with the other kinds of cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Beyond's coin, um, Solana, and, and there, are, there are many other such uh, coins. So that effectively is what cryptocurrencies are. Is the rise in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies justified or is it a bubble? Do they have any inherent value or is their rise driven purely by speculative mania? Yeah, so, so that's, uh, that is the billion dollar question or, or like three trillion dollar question. Now, the reason I say three trillion dollars is that the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies combined is estimated to be about three trillion dollars. Now, that's a huge amount of money, right? That's not like some hobbyist uh, putting in their pocket change. That is where institutional money has come in. Now, um, so unlike a regular currency, unlike, let's say, for the US dollar, the, the US government backs the US dollar, right? So um, uh, and, and that's true about all other currencies. That it, it, it is um, created by government fiat. And, and so the government backs the currency. And that's what gives value to the currency, right? Um, you, so you, uh, so, so just to be, just to clarify, uh, you think the U.S. dollar has a certain value because you have an inherent trust in the U.S. government that they will not let that currency depreciate beyond a certain level. Okay. Um, now, currencies historically, like for example, gold and uh, silver and other precious metals, have a value associated with them because um, because gold has an inherent value. Now. Uh, in case of uh, or other commodities, they have inherent value because they are useful for some purpose in society and that gives them value. Cryptocurrencies are not backed by any state and they don't have any inherent val value, right? They're just digital tokens. So their value is whatever the people investing in cryptocurrencies make it out to be. People have now started saying that it could, it potentially could be a bubble, right? It's, um, it, its value keeps on going up just because its value has been previously grow, going up. Now, the reverse could also hold true, right? I mean, there, there are parallels to this uh, in history. For example, in the 1600s, there was something called the tulip mania, where uh, tulip, like the flower, were bid to exorbitant prices in the world market because people were speculating on tulips. And, and so for, for, for a few years, the value of tulips went on growing exponentially and then people suddenly lost faith in it and it collapsed. The same happened in the 1700s with what is called the South Sea bubble and even very intelligent people like, like Isaac Newton, the famous scientist, he had invested in, in, in that uh, bubble and um, uh, it is rumored that he lost money. So uh, cryptos could very well um, 
be just that. Now, uh, people, the, the supporters of crypto say that this kind of um, currency will eventually become the primary mode of transaction, right? And, and this is kind of driven by the fear about, uh, about the banking system, which was um, caused by the Great Recession of 2008 and by a distrust in the central banks, right? So they, they are kind of using that um, uh, fear uh, to say that, okay, here is a currency which cannot be devalued by central banks. There is a hard limit on how many cryptocurrencies you can create. For example, in case of Bitcoin, uh, you can... Uh, you are only ever going to have 21 million Bitcoins. And it is rumored that at the current rate at which Bitcoins are created, by 2140, all Bitcoins would have been mined and no new Bitcoin would ever be created. So you, now you have a scarce resource and um, which has been bid up and uh, that is what is causing this exponential growth. But uh, does it really have a value in real life, right? I mean, can it really be used for transactions? Now, there you have a problem, right? Because uh, the total number of transactions which the crypto, which the Bitcoin network, for example, today supports, it is estimated that um, uh, you can't do more than like five or six um, transactions per second globally, right? Uh, there, is, there are estimates that max you can go to, uh, let's say, seven, somebody has estimated that you can go to seven transactions per second globally, which, is, which doesn't meet the requirements of the global economy. Uh, for example, uh, the visa um, system, right? We are familiar with the visa credit card. Um, they can handle 24,000 transactions per second, right? So that's what, and visa is just one of many uh, credit cards, right? So that is kind of the uh, the requirements of the global economy. So uh, crypto uh, replacing traditional transaction mechanisms, it seems far-fetched and un unlikely. Now, outside of that, um, it's also very vol volatile. So when you, see, uh, there are other people who argue, no, it's not, you can't use it for transactions, but it's a store of value. Uh, but given that it, it kind of fluctuates like 50% down, 50% up, uh, how is it even a store of value? Uh, so, so then it, I mean, the only conclusion you're left with is that it's a pure speculative mania. China has banned all cryptocurrency operations and even cryptocurrency mining. Many other countries have put restrictions on cryptocurrencies while also regulating it in different ways. Despite all this, El Salvador has adopted cryptocurrency as one of its official currencies. What has prompted this move and how is that working out? So we have to separate out what El Salvador is doing from what other countries are doing, right? Like, for example, China has uh, declared that um, uh, they will launch the digital yuan. Now, that is separate, right? That is a currency which is backed by the Chinese central bank. El Salvador has decided that Bitcoin is uh, going to be used, uh, is, is a valid uh, legal uh, tender, uh, it's, it's a valid currency for uh, transactions happening in El Salvador, right? In fact, vendors within El Salvador are mandated to accept Bitcoin as a currency. Now, um, so, so we need to look at El Salvador as a special case. And it is a special case because, it, frankly, it has a, it has a kleptocratic, regime which is authoritarian um, and which faces a, a economic crisis. Now, the, 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 this actually dates back to, to far uh, before cryptos came into existence. In 2001, um, El Salvador basically dollarized their economy. So they, they basically said that the US dollar is a, is a um, legal currency which can be used inside El Salvador. And uh, um, now, all transactions within El Salvador use the US dollar. So, um, their local currency is no longer used, right? And now, what that causes is, it causes a problem in that your, your country's central bank loses control of its money supply because it's not, like, the, the El Salvador central bank cannot arbitrarily create US dollars, right? The US dollars are created by the US central bank. So, Hence, when a country loses control of its money supply, it gets into a very difficult position that it cannot um, regulate its economy. Typically, when, when um, economies are either overheating or it's going into a recession, you uh, reduce or increase the money supply, which central banks 
can do. Now, if a central bank loses control of its currency, then it can no longer do that, right? And so that results in uh, economy which is effectively out of control, right? And El Salvador's economy has been uh, suffering. It, it hasn't grown um, as much as its neighbors have grown. The other thing is El Salvador, um, their estimates that they need about $500 uh, million dollars, uh, to, to address their budget deficit. Now, because they don't have a central bank which controls a currency, that cannot be financed by just printing money, right? It has to be got from private investors. And uh, El Salvador has been in talks with the with, uh, IMF, and they are facing uh, challenges there. Uh, and one of the reasons they are facing challenges is that um, uh, the, their government fired the Attorney General and five justices of the Supreme Court, after which their bonds have effectively collapsed, right? So their bonds, which are... Uh, uh, kind of maturing in 2025, now have an interest rate of 25%, which makes it unviable to borrow uh, money using using that route, right? So it's almost like a publicity, a, a gimmick which their president is doing by saying that, oh, we are going to now accept Bitcoins, or rather we are going to force our people to accept Bitcoins. And they're raising a billion dollar bond, uh, which they call the Bitcoin bonds, and what they're going to do is $500 million of that, they're going to use in um, installing Bitcoin infrastructure, right? Mining machines and stuff like that. And the other $500 million, they're going to put in uh, Bitcoins for five years. And the, the promise is that after five years, if there are any gains from that $500 million uh, Bitcoins they have purchased, that will be equally shared between the investors and the government. Now, if you look at this, this is a pure gamble, right? So if the value of Bitcoin goes up like it has been going up exponentially for the past few years, there will be a windfall gains for the government and the government can use that to fix its budget deficit. Uh, but if the, if the price of Bitcoin either stagnates or fall, then El Salvador is in a world of pain, right? Because they will go further into debt um, for for this whole uh, thing that they've created, um, uh, so uh, so I, I don't think we should really look at uh, what El Salvador has is doing as kind of a, what other countries will do. Yeah,